Hey, I'm Gareth from Bug Hammers, and today it's Boca time. We're gonna run through five tips on how to capture some great bokeh. So bokeh is the pleasing, lovely, beautiful, out of focus part of your photograph. It's the background that's completely blurred out. It's those lovely lights that goes into those lovely round circles. It's those foreground elements that frame your subject while being completely blurred out. And it is lovely. It's something that a lot of us strive for to get into our photographs. A lot of us spend a lot of time getting it right. So to get bokeh, to get some really nice, pleasing, creamy bokeh, you're gonna have to create a shallow depth of field. So we're gonna run through five tips which are gonna help you to do that, help you to control your depth of field, and ultimately help you use it to get some great bokeh. So tip number one is to use a wide or fast aperture lens. Now this is any lens with a fast aperture. So generally that would be something like f2.8 or faster. Now I use the 50 millimeter f1.8 quite a lot because it's quite an inexpensive way of getting a nice fast aperture lens to give you that shallow depth of field so you can get that lovely bokeh. You can go something like f1.4, f1.2. The smaller that number, the larger the aperture and the shallower your depth of field is gonna be. But it's not an instant win to use a fast aperture lens because tip number two, you have to choose the right lens. So if you're using an 85 millimeter f1.4, you're gonna get very different results to a 24 millimeter f1.4. The longer your lens, the longer your focal length, the more compression you're gonna get. And that really helps with maximizing your bokeh. It is possible to get bokeh with a wide angle lens. You can certainly do it with a 24 millimeter f1.4, but if you combine a fast aperture, so let's say f1.4 with a longer focal length, let's say 85 millimeter, you are gonna get generally smoother, creamier, oh, lovely looking bokeh. Tip number three is to put some distance between your subject and your background. Now, if you have your subject right up against your background, so let's say you're shooting a subject against the wall, you have them right up against the wall, they're pretty much on the same focal plane, and there's not gonna be much distinction between subject and background in terms of what's in focus. But if you pulled your subject a couple of meters away from the wall, you're gonna get a totally different situation. You're gonna get a big distinction between subject and background. There's gonna be a big distinction between what's in focus and out of focus, and you get a nice blurred background, nice smooth, creamy bokeh, and that's definitely worth going for. The more distance you put between your subject and the background, the greater the separation of what's in focus will be. Similarly to that, tip number four is to move closer to your subject. So by moving closer into your subject, you're gonna bring out more details in your subject, but you're also gonna help distinguish better between subject and background. It's gonna better separate your subject from the out of focus elements, and you'll end up with a nice smooth bokeh background. So tip number five is to choose the right background or foreground. Now, there's lots of things that can look great as bokeh shots, lights in particular, always look great because they take on different shapes, different sizes, they look great as a background. You can also dangle them in front of your camera to get some really nice foreground elements. And that's important to remember, it's not just about background, you wanna be taking into account foreground elements as well. So for example, if you were to shoot through something, if you have two objects either side of your subject, you shoot through them, you're gonna not only get some nice foreground out of focus elements, but you're also gonna, bonus, frame your subject up really nicely. Anything can look good in the right circumstances, so just pay attention to what you're using for your bokeh shots. So those are our five tips for shooting some great bokeh shots, but we definitely left some tips out. So I'd love to hear any tips you have about shooting some great bokehlicious shots. Pop them down in the comments below. I'd love to read about them. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.